Hi, welcome back to Tech Ventures. My name is Lizina, and I'm a technical marketing engineer at Future Electronics. In our last episode, we talked about a wireless MCU series from ST Microelectronics, the STM32WB series. Wireless just got better. If you need a refresher, you can find the link in the description box below. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to get the BLE Health Thermometer application running on the PNucleo WB55 kit, which is one of the many corresponding development kits for the STM32WB MCU series. Before we can get started with our demo, we're going to need a few things. On the hardware side, we need the PNucleo WB55 kit. For today's demonstration purposes, we will use the shield so you may leave your dongle on the side. A quick walkthrough of the hardware. We have the PCB antenna over here, the STM32WB55 module over here, the Arduino and Morpho headers, and here we have the ST-Link debugger. We will need a micro USB cable to power our board, and we will use this USB port. So I'm going to connect the other end of the wire to my laptop. On the software side, ST Microelectronics offers a wide range of tools for development and prototyping. We will be using the STM32 Cube IDE, STM32 Cube MX, and STM32 Cube Programmer, and we will also need the ST VLE Toolbox app, which can be found on both Google Play Store and the App Store for Apple devices. First, we will need the STM32 Cube MX. This is a graphical and configuration tool for generating and initializing C code for the STM32 microcontroller family. This is available for download on the ST Microelectronics website. Once you've gone through the installation procedure, open STM32 Cube MX. I have a shortcut on my desktop, and you'll be greeted with a screen like so. Then, we'll need the STM32 Cube WB which is the embedded software package that includes low-level drivers, middleware wireless stacks, and the application examples for the STM32WB MCU. This package is available for download through st.com or through the STM32 Cube MX. Let's direct our attention back to the STM32 Cube MX window. You'll notice in this box a blue install and remove button. Go ahead and select that. Scroll down until you get to the STM32WB section and click the little triangle to expand it. Here you can find the different versions of the firmware available. Select the first box to install the latest version. Details about each install is highlighted in the box below. Select Install Now to begin the installation process. When we installed the STM32 Cube MX, we installed the repository folder on our C drive. We can navigate to this folder through the file path on the screen. So go into your C drive, navigate to Users, then select your name, then go ahead and find the STM32 Cube folder. Then select Repository and select the latest firmware package for the STM32WB. At the time of this tutorial, it is 1.15.0. Here, you'll find many folders. They contain valuable information such as the CMSYS modules, the drivers, the middleware libraries, and a full set of software projects that include basic example applications and demonstrations for each board provided for the corresponding STM32 series. We are going to need this folder for two things today. One, to update the wireless stack firmware on the PNucleo WB55, and two, to run our BLE Health Thermometer project on the PNucleo WB55 development board. To update the wireless stack, we're going to need the STM32 Cube programmer which is an all-in-one multi-OS software tool for programming STM32 products. It is available for download on st.com, and at the time of this tutorial, the latest version is 2.12.0. Open the STM32 Cube Programmer, and you'll be greeted with a screen like this. On the top right-hand side, select ST-Link and connect. 
The drivers should have loaded onto your machine automatically when you powered on the board. On the left-hand side, you will observe various icons. Select the one that resembles a Wi-Fi icon. We have arrived to the firmware upgrade services page. Select the browse button to point to the location of the binary file you wish to use. I'm going to open a file explorer page on my machine separately to show you the location of the binaries for the wireless stack in the repository. It'll be easier to navigate and to find um, the location of the files. So once we're back in here, uh, I'm just going to maximize my window over here so I can show you better. Um, I'm going to go into the projects folder and I'm going to select the file, rather the folder that says wireless binaries. Our development board is based off the STM32WB5X series, so select that folder. This is the location for the binaries for the BLE thread and Zigbee stacks. For today's demo, select the one that says BLE stack full firmware. Next, we need to identify the start address. That information can be found in the release notes in the wireless binaries folder. A web page will open up and you can find the appropriate start address for each stack based on the MCU being used. Um, I'm going to copy uh, the one that is appropriate for me and insert it back into the STM32 cube programmer right over here. We've completed the setup and now we may begin the process to upgrade our firmware. Select the green button that says firmware upgrade. There's a lot of stuff happening in the background, but there will be a first message that will notify you that deleting the current firmware was successful. It popped up on the other window for me over here, so I'm just going to drag it here. So that's great. And then shortly thereafter, you'll be notified that the upgrade was a success. And my message popped up on the other window over here. So this is great. We're almost there. The last step finally is to start the wireless stack. The button to enable it is located under the WB commands. And once again, there is a notification um, saying that we were successful. So we finished upgrading our firmware and we're ready to move on to the next step. Before we move on to the next step, as a reminder, please be sure to disconnect the ST-Link connection in the STM32Cube programmer by selecting the green button over here. Let's head back into our repository folder and navigate to the BLE Projects folder. Select the PNucleo WB55, select Applications, select BLE. Today's tutorial will be on the BLE Health Thermometer, so go ahead and select that folder. In summary, to make the program work, we must do two things. Number one is to open our preferred toolchain, and then number two is to rebuild all the files and flash our board with the executable file. One of the many advantages that ST Microelectronics holds are application examples and source code for many industry preferred tool chains such as Kyle and IAR. Sometimes the challenge there is that a license is required to build our code. The alternative to bypass that is to use STM32 Cube IDE. It's a free IDE tool to develop and debug code and best of all, there are no memory size limitations. So here we are back into the BLE Health Thermometer project folder. 
My preferred choice of toolchain is the STM32 Cube IDE. I'm going to open the folder and select the file with the .project extension. And the STM32 Cube IDE will open the project file. On my screen, I can see that the project is open in the Project Explorer file directory. To get this project running is pretty simple um, and straightforward. I'm going to select the hammer icon to build. And as you can see, it really didn't take long for the file to build. And there are zero errors, zero warnings, which is what I love to see. And then to run the project, I'm going to select the little play button over here and that runs the project. Back on my board, I've noticed that the LED2 is a solid green. Now for the fun part. I'm going to open the STBLE Toolbox app on my phone and if everything worked out smoothly, like it should, I should see HTSTM advertising. I'd like to mention that today I'm using an Android device and my Bluetooth and location are enabled. I can see there are many Bluetooth devices that are advertising around me and this is the one that I'm looking for so I'm going to connect to it. Once the connection is established, I can see the different services on the BLE Health Thermometer profile, the generic attributes, and even the received signal strength indicator. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to get the BLE Health Thermometer Profile running on the P-Nucleo WB55. To learn more about ST Microelectronics' wireless modules, please contact your local Future Electronics representative or visit us online at futureelectronics.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time on Tech Ventures with Lazina.